Hey folks, how you doing? Bolt Matrix here, and today we're taking a look at everyone's favorite Autobot curmudgeon, Huffer. This is Deluxe Class Huffer from Transformers Kingdom. I picked this figure up over at thecommandstore.com. This guy is one of the figures that was announced late last year, late 2020, that I have been looking forward to, and he doesn't disappoint, and he kind of does at the same time. The painting on the figure is pretty good. It definitely feels like a Generation 1 Huffer design, and I'm welcome to that, but let's face it, that Generation 1 Huffer was a little bit weird. The overall aesthetic, though, I can't argue with it. The figure comes with two accessories, the first of which is his gun, and the gun actually splits in half for the vehicle mode. And the other accessory he comes with is this cool shield. However, the shield is a little bit strange, because it looks like it's supposed to be held like this, but there's no way for him to hold it like that. But he could mount it on his arm and look through it like so that kind of works the overall look of the robot mode is absolutely fantastic i love the way this thing looks it looks exactly the way i wanted it to however if you go back and look at the renderings from hasbro there are a couple of differences one the wheels are a little bit different and two the bottom of the feet are orange in the renderings and they're gray plastic here I am actually okay with that because in the alt mode, the gray on the back works better. The posability of the figure is pretty good. We'll go over that in a second. But there is one oddity going on, and that's specifically with his backpack. Straight out of the box, the figure's backpack is pushed up against his back like this. But according to the directions, you're supposed to have the robot mode with the backpack pushed all the way up like that. That's ridiculous. That looks so stupid, and it's nowhere near what I think or the what I think the proportions for Huffer should be. So I kind of go a happy, happy middle and do it about halfway down. Yeah, it's sticking off the back a little bit more, but I think that works a little bit better. And it, it definitely doesn't look as cattywankus as the, you know, just giant satellite dish truck mode that he's got going on here. Though could be a hoodie. Huffer is a pretty darn poseable figure. Head is on a swivelly ball joint. There is a ball joint in there, but it's got virtually no up and down movement. A uh, ball joint and hinge for the shoulders swivel just above the elbows that bend just about 90 degrees. Unfortunately, the fists don't articulate. There is a torso swivel, ball joint in the hip, bend at the knee over 90 degrees, and there is foot articulation that it goes past 90 degrees. Huffer can do the splits. He's not happy about it, though. I absolutely adore this grumpy little bot in robot mode. I am so happy with it. It looks exactly the way I wanted it to. It poses well. And it's, it's everything I wanted from a modern Huffer figure. In terms of height, he does scale to the deluxe class versions of figures from Kingdom, but he is shorter than other deluxe class versions. You can see Blue Streak back here. He is shorter than Blue Streak. And he is shorter than most of the deluxe class figures from Earthrise, but he's the same size as some of the deluxe class figures from Kingdom, which is really strange. And if you're wondering, yeah, he actually towers over Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee, so don't worry about that. My Huffer's card that he came with is an arc that has an arc behind it. <sighs> yeah, whatever. I actually don't really care for these things. That's why I haven't been showing them off, because this is the sixth arc I have. I have Ark, or The Ark, Dinobot, and Optimus Prime. Those are the only ones I've got. Huffer's transformation is pretty easy, but interesting. So to start with, move the cab up all the way out of the way. Grab the head and fold the entire front torso down. Straighten out the arms and point them straight ahead and then pull the shoulders down. That will allow you to flip the wheels out from behind the figure, then or behind the chest, then collapse that up, plug it in, take the arms and do what you can to get them to turn around. Okay, I kind of screwed that up, so we're just going to have to force them around like that. Then close the chest up, take the arms and turn them so that the 
the ports. The siege ports are pointing to the outside. Peg the up top shoulders in. Fold the cab back and peg it into the inside of the arms like this. And then fold the fists in. Flip the feet around to the front of the shins. Peg the legs together and fold up the legs like that. Finally, grab the gun and split it in half. You're going to need fingernails in order to do this, so split it in half. Take the shield and peg it into the back like this, and then the gun will peg into the sides of the shield and look absolutely ridiculous like this. And then we're done. The alt mode we end up with is a tiny little truck that is supposed to be able to haul a bunch of stuff, but it doesn't look right. I don't particularly like the bed that's sticking off of here. I think this looks pretty stupid, but as soon as you remove it, you realize that there is a problem with this design. Those wheels are not sitting correctly at all. If you actually pick the figure up and look at it, the wheels are not lined up. You see the front wheels are much lower than the back wheels. And it's almost as if they forgot a joint somewhere. So you peg in the legs and then the whole truck looks like it's been split in half or snapped down the middle. And it doesn't work. It just does not work well. Now, yes, when you've added on this section and then you've added the guns on it works a little bit better but see how it's port see how it's angled down to the middle of the truck that doesn't work that doesn't look right it, it looks broken and it almost makes me think that there's supposed to be an extra step that they somehow engineered out of the figure it just looks dumb but from the front the alt mode looks great which is weird. As soon as you look at it from the side, it looks terrible. But the front looks good. And heck, you can even see inside the windows. And it looks like there are seats in there. That's a very nice touch. Overall, I actually do like Huffer. I really like this figure. The robot mode alone sells it. Alt mode's got some issues. It, it just does. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm, I'm wondering if Dr. Wu or any of these other third-party companies are going to make like little repair kits for it oh one thing you just saw there i have a tendency when i push the wheels in or pull them out the wheels pop off way too easily oh well um i wouldn't say it's a failure but it's definitely stupid anywho i'm very happy with the figure in robot mode Vehicle mode, not so much, but robot mode, definitely. Oh, and yes, he can pull Prime's trailer without any issue. I just can't find my Earthrise Optimus Prime anywhere. I think it actually got thrown out by mistake. Whoops. Anyway, so folks, I'm going to put some links down in the description to pick this up at your favorite e-retailer. Please be sure to follow those links to pick it up for yourself. I love this figure in robot mode. I think it's definitely worth having, especially if you're a fan of G1. Let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. The bell isn't working right now for my channel for some reason, and I'm trying to figure out why. Thanks a lot. I've been Ball Matrix. I'll catch you next time. Hey folks, how you doing? Vault Matrix here, and today we're taking a look at Megatron, the core class figure from Transformers Kingdom. This figure comes to me from a purchase I made over at thecommandstore.com. The figure stands about three-ish inches tall and is modeled in everything you see here. He comes with one accessory, and that is his gun. His little handheld gun that is a model of almost his Walter P-38. <laughs> that is so stupid. I love it. It's so incredibly dumb. But it can attach to the back, so you get that more G1-esque silhouette going. That is a very nice idea. If you haven't guessed already, I actually like this figure quite a bit. There is, or I should say, I have one major issue with it, and we'll mention that later. The treads on the back are fine, and I actually really do like the giant pylons he has for shoulders. 
I like that. The backpack, it's a bit much. I get what they're going for, though. And I understand why it's there. Just at this class, that huge chunk of plastic is the most cost-effective thing they could do for the treads. The fusion cannon could be a little bit bigger, but its size does work for the figure, so I'm fine with it. And the overall paint scheme is really, really nice. The silver on the backs and sides of the legs for the treads all work. He's got silver hands, the gunmetal, and they painted the parts that matter. And the face. The face is just about perfect. Posability for our favorite despot is pretty good. Head is on a swivel, ball joint in the shoulder, ball joint at the elbow. Fists um, don't really swivel, but there is a swivel on this fist, but that's for the armor for the transformation. Ball joint in the hip, ball joint in the knee, no foot articulation. Unfortunately, the ball joints in the hips and the knees are just too loose. They're just way too loose. But that is a problem that is fixable, so I'm overly okay with it. In terms of height, Megatron scales to all the other core class figures, though he does feel bigger simply because of those giant shoulder pads. Very 80s of him. Transformation is very similar to Earthrise and Siege figure or versions of the figure. Put the head straight, remove the gun from the backpack, take the treads and flip them up and over his head like this. Take the arms and fold the shoulders up and turn the arms so that the fists are pointing down. Now, this is done a little bit differently on the arm with the fusion cannon, because you flip the fusion cannon around to point forward, flip the shoulder up, and then the forearm armor will actually flip around with the fist to cover it up. To finish the transformation on the turret, there are pegs on the back that the tops of the forearms will snap into. Now for the legs. Turn the legs 180 degrees, and then they will accordion out and up, and fit over the treads, and they will peg into these little clips that are inside. This is a very smart idea. Very, very intelligent. I, I'm really surprised that they were able to get this level of a transformation into a figure this size. That's very, very smart. Lastly, take the gun and peg it into the barrel, and that's it. And there we go, it's tank mode. Now I will freely admit this little tank is kind of derpy very derpy. It it works, but it's, it's silly. It's kind of a combination between the Earthrise mode and Titanium Megatron, which is one of the worst figures I have ever owned. Turret can turn 360 degrees, little bit of up and down movement at the actual turret. Okay, not a little bit, a lot more up and down movement at the turret. It works. It works really well, even if it oddly proportioned. Overall, I like this Megatron figure a lot. It's a ton of fun. I actually like it more than the Earthrise mold, so there's that. I'm wondering if we're actually going to get another Megatron in Kingdom other than this. I know we're getting that Galvatron. Lord knows I've made like three videos on it already. Anywho, I like this figure a lot. I think it's totally worth picking up. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. I have been Wall Matrix, and I'll catch you next time. Hey folks, how you doing? Bolt Matrix here, and today we're taking a look at Kingdom Core Class Starscream. I picked this figure up over at thecommandstore.com. Standing at about three inches tall, the figure is quite good and painted rather well for a figure of this size class. The molding is excellent, and overall, it is a solid, solid seeker figure. I'm quite smitten with it. I really am. The only complaint I have about it is that the null rays fall off way too easily. And yeah, it could use a little bit more paint in some very, like, the legs. The legs could use a little bit more paint, but overall, it's pretty darn good. And this figure also manages to have the Decepticon symbols pointing in the right direction in both modes. That's because the transformation is really unique and is done way differently than any other Starscream figure I've ever seen. Now that being said, let's talk about the posability and then we'll get into the transformation. Head is on a swivel and moves side to side, but getting your fat fingers in there is really tough. The wings actually do fold all the way back. The shoulders are on ball joints, ball joint at the elbows, ball joint at the hips, no real swivel except for the hips, but doesn't matter because there's a ball joint in the knee, there is no foot articulation. With the wings folded all the way back, the figure becomes very top heavy, even though he's already top heavy, and that's because there are no heels, none. 
And there really should be. I would have loved for there to be like one little thing that could flip out here and be heels. But unfortunately, there are no heels. And as I said, the stupid null rays have a tendency to pop out way too easily. They do hold their shape, though, and they do stay in place. But just a little bit of force and they pop out. Not the end of the world. In terms of height, Core Class Starscream scales exactly with the other Core Class figures. For the transformation, you want to remove the null rays, and then I like to fold the wings up a little bit, come down to the feet and peg them together, and then come to the outside of the legs and flip down the tail wings. You really have to get your fingers in here in order to get things moved around, because they do actually peg into place really tightly. Next, come to the chest, and starting with the left arm, or the left side of the chest, actually start kind of moving it until you can flip it open like this. And do the same thing to the right side and fold them all the way out like that. Next, take the head, fold it down, take the nose cone and flip it around and flip it up into place. Turn the head 180 degrees and push it up into the nose cone on this double hinge and just get everything situated. Then take the entire nose cone section where the head is and fold it down. Take the entire backpack and flip it 180 degrees around. Flip the legs up into place. Take the nose cone and fold it back until it snaps into place on that double hinge. Push the head back up into the nose cone again. And then fold the chest over what are the knees. Then turn the arms and they will peg into these little peg holes on the bottom of the wings and then reattach the guns. At this size class, this is a fantastic toy and an absolutely wonderful transformation. It's so much more complicated than I thought it was going to be, and it actually feels a little bit more complicated than even a deluxe class figure. It, it's really impressive. Yeah, the paint isn't quite there. There are a few, I think, details missing, and I would love to see a couple of things added, like, you know, heels. The only complaint I have about the plane mode is the fists sticking off the bottom like that. I think that they could have solved that by having a little swivel in here to turn the fist to the side and then flip it up. Yeah, you would still see some knuckles, but at least the fist would be hidden. This is a really cool, tiny little figure. It's just a shame it doesn't have any pegs for a flight stand. Oh, well. Boy, that is a couple of negatives, isn't it? Yeah, no heels. Fists showing in robot mode, no flight stand port. Okay, those are the main issues that I have with it. Wait, I take that back. There is a peg hole. It's right there. It's at the front of the nose cone. It can be used in robot mode as well. Heh, <laughs> completely missed that. Overall, I like this Starscream a lot. It's totally worth having in your collection, especially if you're a fan of this size class. Also, next time, we're going to be taking a look at Megatron. So folks, let me know what you think of the figure down in the comments. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And do me a favor hit the bell, and let me know if you can actually hit the bell. I've gotten some reports that say that the bell doesn't work. So let me know. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a good day. I've been Ball Matrix, and I'll catch you next time. Don't vape, kids. <laughs> I have been trying to figure out for the better part of a week what to say about this stupid thing. It honestly feels like we've gotten cup figures for years, when we've only gotten four different versions of the character in the last five years. But it feels like we've had so much more since 2016. Cup stands the exact same height as Blur and Hot Rod and a couple of the others. And what I mean is he's around the same size as other deluxe class figures in the Studio Series 1986 line, of which I've reviewed Blur. Anyway, the robot mode is fine. He's got a nice butt port right there so he could go on a figure stand. He's got okay articulation. He comes with an Energon goodie dispenser and a gun that is modeled off of his original Generation 1 toy. Though he's got some issues. Like Blur, his face is absolutely terrible. The head sculpt's good, but the face is ugly and looks like he's in a constant state of constipation. The figure does sport some absolutely fantastic light piping, thankfully, but the proportions of the figure just feel wrong. His shoulders are sagged down into the middle of his chest. His fists are molded plastic attached to the rest of the forearm. The shoulder, when I go to move it, unpegs. The knees are ratcheted, but the ratchets don't start at the, you know, 
the very beginning of the straight part. It bends a little bit and then they click into place. But the one leg is much better than the other leg, which that first click feels like it's been sanded down and it doesn't actually catch until you've gone about 35 degrees. And the figure has no heels, so he has a tendency to fall over far too easily. I, I didn't plan that. I really didn't. And let's all be honest, it's super lame to be remembered for being ripped apart by a giant metal kraken. I mean, come on. Yeah, you could put them back together, but... <sighs> well, don't forget that burr in his rotator. Now, the designers of this figure are kind of sick in the head. I really do believe that. Because Cup has the ability to... <sighs> become... Well, you could rip off all his limbs. Yes, you could rip off all his limbs, and then you can have some real fun with him and turn him into all sorts of horrifying monsters and creatures, and honestly, that's the best part of this figure is the fact that you could rip his arms and legs off and just do fun, terrible, horrible things to him. Yeah, I, I kind of love this figure simply for that. Posability for Cup is okay. Head can't look down at all, can look up a little bit. It is on a ball joint, but that chin prevents him from looking down. Shoulders are on hinges and swivels. There is a swivel at the upper bicep. Bend at the elbow goes over 90 degrees. No fist articulation. Torso articulation that is very tight. Hips are a swivel on the inside and then a pin hinge. Then the thigh swivel, which can come apart. And then the ratcheting knees, which don't work all that well. And finally, the feet can bend about 20 degrees-ish. And no forward and back. Man, I'm still, I'm just angry about the fact that he doesn't have heels. If he just had, like, a little thing that could flip out or flip down, that would be infinitely better. Other than the giant siege ports on the bottom of his feet, there's nothing else. He doesn't have any other compatibility with the Siege or Earthrise lines at all, which is a shame. I would have liked to have had, you know, something molded, or maybe on the bottom of his forearms or something. That also means that there's nowhere for you to peg his Energon goodie dispenser into, you know, to store it, nor can you put his gun anywhere, really. You would expect that this little tiny tab hole down here would be able to peg his gun into and, you know, have a gun taint, but, nope. Peg's too big, hole's too small. With the transformation complete, we end up with what is probably the best rendition of Cup's Cybertronian alt mode that we've ever gotten. The strange and, dare I say, incredibly stupid pickup truck that Cup transforms into is represented very well here. I just am a little bit bummed with the colors. They are all super muted and rather boring. And, ah, what can I do about it? Not much. I'm wondering if Repro Labels is going to be making any new stickers for this guy, because that would be very cool. I would like to see that. I can't argue with the authenticity. Or, no, that's not correct. I can't argue with the, with the way it looks. It looks really good and feels very accurate to that original, or what I always thought Cup would look like in alt mode, though the truck bed is really kind of short. Maybe it's a pup truck? I don't know. Weapons can be mounted on this mode on the sides. There are little indents, or I should say accessories, so the gun can mount there, and then the Energon goodie dispenser can mount over here, either like that, or turn it around, 
and he can launch Energon goodies out the back. Overall, I am rather happy with the alt mode, even if it does feel a little bit on the tiny side. But it can do to do with no problems. Overall, Studio Series Deluxe Class Cup is fine-ish. The fact that you can remove his limbs and then attach all these other kibbles and bits from different battle masters, battle masters? Yes, and fossilizers is a fantastic addition that I don't think Hasbro really knew what they were getting themselves into when they did that. Otherwise, other than that, unless you're a G1 diehard, I would actually kind of skip this figure because it's not that great. It's only just okay. But that being said, I am really interested to see what Hasbro is going to repaint this guy as. I can easily see this figure coming out as an Orion Pax repaint again. So folks, let me know what you think of the figure down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix, and I'll catch you next time. Hello everyone, I'm Bolt Matrix, and I hope you're all doing well today. We're going to be taking a look at Zen Kaiger Change Heroes series figures. And I picked all of these up at tokulectibles.com. We've got Jurdon, Gaon, Zen Kaiser, Majin, and Vroon. All of these figures come in cute little boxes that look like this and are pretty nice. They're not very big figures. We'll do a size comparison here in a second. The one cool thing is you got to cut them open and then the directions are actually inside the, the backing and they're just black and white directions, but they somehow are better detailed than Hasbro's directions. I don't know how they manage that. Now, before we get into the figures, I want to show you these snacks that came along with them. Two Collectibles was nice enough to send me some snacks. So we'll go ahead and open them up. And they are little chocolate gears. Oh, Lord. Mmm. Mmm. They're puffed rice with chocolate on them. Mmm. Mmm. Those are good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to put them off to the side and eat them off camera. Starting off with looking at Zen Kaiser himself. This is the main ranger for the show. He is modeled in white, gold, yellow, green, blue, and pink, and black. And the, the character itself is very striking, especially in motion. The figure we have here is fine, though... Unlike the other ones, he doesn't do any kind of transformation, and I would have loved to have seen his gun painted a little bit better and actually be, you know, straight, because the gun itself is weird. If you're holding it like that, it shoots off at an angle. I guess that's the way the toy is in real life. Eh, not a big deal. Though it is hollow on one side, which sucks. Getting it into his hand and out of the hand is a little bit tight because those fists are very tight. Overall, though, I do like the look of it. I wish the cape was the color that it is in the show because it's white on the one side and red on the other. But guess what? I can fix that myself. Posability of this figure is excellent. Head is on a swivel at the bottom of the neck, and then the actual head is on a ball joint. Shoulder pads move up and down and then have 360 degree rotation with a hinge. There is a swivel just above the elbow. Elbow bends just over 90 degrees in both directions. Well, okay, not 90 degrees in the back direction. And then fists are articulated. There is torso swivel. Legs have plenty of range of movement. Thigh swivel, bend at the knee, ball joint at the foot. One word of warning, ball joints are a little bit loose on all of these figures at the feet. Nothing a little bit of floor polish cannot fix. The figure does have a peg hole on his belt loop just above his butt. However, you can't actually wear the cape and access that belt or that peg hole. So you have to pull the cape off if you want to have him displayed on any kind of figure stand, which is a shame. I really would have wished they had added just a little hinge there. That would have been great, but they didn't. So you're kind of left having to do something like this with no cape, and to be honest, the figure needs the cape. The character really needs the cape in order to make the whole thing look, you know, whole. Next up is Zenkai Juron, and looks pretty good. 
it really does look pretty good. The red, the black, and the silver paint all work very well, though looking from the back, he is just kind of monochromatic black. But overall, the, the look of him from the front is nice. The sword he comes with is his tail in dino mode, and on the one side, looks great. Could use a sticker. On the other side, it's hollow. Dull. Oh well. Posability wise pretty darn good. Head is on a swivel. Doesn't have any up and down movement. Arms are on pegs that have swivels and hinges. Bends at the elbow, not quite 90 degrees, and it is a kind of ball jointed. Well, okay, not ball jointed as you see, it's just a pin. Come on, get back in there. Torso articulation, hinge, swivel, lots of movement, bends at the knee, articulation at the foot. This guy has a tendency to fall apart. The shoulders just pop off very easily, and everything just has a tendency to pop apart, but it's supposed to do that for the transformation into his dino mode. Take the peg, turn it around, have the little peg bit pointing forward, grab one of the legs, and that should peg in like this. Then take the bottom crotch, turn it around, turn it upside down, and that's supposed to peg in underneath like that. And then the tail is supposed to peg in, whoop, <laughs> gotta unpeg that. The tail is supposed to peg in like this, so like that, according to the directions. Oop, nope. And then the tail is supposed to peg in to the back like that. You can just stand that up. Dino head, one arm, pointing straight back. Peg that in. Other arm, do the same thing. Make sure that the dino is lined up. Then drop it down on top. And by on top, I mean right there in the, like that. And then I'm supposed to angle the legs. Well, you know what? I'll just leave them like that. I'm not totally convinced that this is the way he is supposed to transform into his dino mode. Yes, it does technically work, but it doesn't hold together well at all. The rear leg or the legs have a tendency to just fall off very easily because the pins that it, they're pegged into are much too short. Now, I did remove this piece on the bottom because they just kept hitting the legs and getting in the way. Next up is Gaon, and he is based off of the Gal Ranger series, aka Wild Force here in the States, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And he's modeled in yellow, silver, black, and a little bit of red and blue up there at the eyes, and some green for the robot eyes. Posability is exactly the same as Juron, who is based off Ranger, which is the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers here in the States. The overall look of the figure, I think, works a little bit better than Juron, a little bit more cohesive, and he definitely holds together better. I still really like this figure. I think it's a very nice feeling figure. Even though Juron does feel a little bit folly a party, this Gaon does not. Only thing I wish is that you could actually peg the claw into his hand. The peg here is just too big, and I wish the underside of the claw was painted silver. Again, something I can do myself. To transform Gaon, first you gotta disassemble it the way we see here. The lower legs, the head, the shoulder pads, and the claw. We'll start with the top of the torso. Take the shoulder pads and peg them in so that the feet are pointing down towards the robot hands. Sorry, I keep burping for some reason. And then take the claw, and that pegs into the top. For the little backpack piece, this is actually going to peg into the back of the beast, like that. And then the head is going to peg in underneath, like that. And then the legs will peg into the back, and... Oop, just get, that, get them out of the way. And then they will literally collapse down to form lion legs. And there we go. The lion form is a little bit weak, and it's got some real Cheetor syndrome going on here, where it's literally the torso f does something and then you fold the legs over. Not that big a deal. It really isn't. It works a little bit better than Jaron, and the coloring, I think, is a little bit more striking. The silver with the black and the yellow, I think that all works a little bit better. But still, we have a very, very goofy lion form here. Now, if you don't like the arms of the robot mode being visible, you can just kind of put them towards the back like this, or you can pull them off, or you can take the shoulders, point them directly forward, 
straighten out the arms, and then put the paws up a little bit. And that does work a little bit better, but you can still see robot hands, so who cares? Next up is Majin, and at the time of this recording, she has not shown up on the show yet. She will be coming this Sunday. And yeah, she's based on Maji Ranger, otherwise known as Mystic Force here in the U.S. And yeah, those are dragons heads or dragon head she has for feet. Overall, the figure looks pretty good. Nice pink, silver, black, and gold. And then ginormous backpack in the back. Majin comes with similar possibility to Jaron and Gaon, but she is a little bit top heavy thanks to these wings. And the ball joints down by her toes are a little bit on the loose side. Not my favorite, but she's fine. Overall, she's fine. I just find that when I pose her, I need to put her on a stand because the poses she looks best in. She's The accessory she comes with is a dragon tail, but it's supposed to be a wand, but it looks real bad. Anywho, uh, to transform her, it's completely disassemble her. Whoops. Then take the legs, straighten the legs out, and straighten the toes out, and combine the toes to form... The dragon head, like so. And then the arms turn 90 degrees, and then put the silver forearms down to act like dragon claws, we'll say. Like that. And then peg the dragon head in, like that. So for this section, you can have it turned like that. And as long as you can peg the robot head in underneath, you're fine. So just get that lined up. There we go. And that whole section pegs into the back, and then the tail pegs in like this. And once fully transformed, it looks pretty good. I did have to remove the robot head from the undercarriage simply because it just wouldn't sit flat with the head sticking out down there. Not that big a deal, just move it off to the side. And then you can actually pose the dragon head a little bit, lift the legs up and then bend the knees and it works fine. Of all the transformations, I think hers is the most successful. And finally, we have Rune, who I think is the least successful in terms of color. He also feels the worst and feels the cheapest. His big, bulky bits are hollow. Like, arms completely hollow, legs hollow, weapon hollow. It just doesn't feel that great in the hand for some reason, and maybe that's because of the paint. But the silver and the blue are quite striking. It just, I don't know what it is about the design. I just don't think it works all that terribly well. And that bulkiness does affect his posability. The shoulders are pretty poseable, but those giant wheels do get in the way of spots. And the giant chunky legs, while they do technically work, again, kind of get in the way. Thankfully, though, he's got nice big heels, so the stability isn't really an issue. I'm just not sold on this guy, and that's probably because of the lack of paint on the outsides. Uh, the I should say the flanks of the figure. I really think there could be some more paint here. Again, nothing I can't do myself. Now, one thing I can't fix is his alt mode, which to me is by far the weakest. But, well, you'll see in a sec. Start with the front of the vehicle mode straighten out the arms and then peg them into the sides like this take the hip or take the backpack component put it underneath and peg the head into that backpack into that component next take the legs fold the knees down fold the crotch up like that so it'll peg in like this and then we take the hammer and peg it into the top of the kneecaps and then this whole section will peg in to that piece that's underneath and then this is pretty much it. How, ah, however, the arms just get in the way. The, see how the arms just will not go flush? You would think there are even cutouts for the wrists, but that doesn't work. So anyway, that is the alt mode for this Zenkai, for Zenkai Varun. As I said, I think it's the weakest one, the weakest toy of the bunch, the weakest alt mode. Next to, uh, so from worst to best in terms of alt modes, it's it's Vroon, Jaron, Gaon, and then Majin. 
in terms of alt mode preference. That's my order. Oh shoot, I have the head upside down again. Overall, I'm happy with this set. Yes, it's got some minor flaws, but they're fun. And for 28 bucks, these are a bunch of fun little figures. And I can't really argue with that. Size-wise, they're a little bit smaller than a current deluxe class Transformer. Maybe around a Legends class Transformer? But definitely bigger than a Core class. Anyway, if you're thinking of picking these up, I strongly suggest you do. They're nice, they're cheap, they even come with a snack. So folks, thank you so much for watching. Check out the description to the, of this video because there's a link to Toe Collectibles down there. Right now, at the time of this recording, these figures are set to being back ordered, unfortunately. But they should be coming back in stock soon, so go ahead and pick them up over at Toe Collectibles. I really like them. They're a ton of fun. They each transform. Unfortunately, they don't combine together, and at the time of this review, we don't know if they actually all will combine together. Red and red and yellow combine, pink and blue do combine into two separate robots. Don't know if there's going to be a combination of all five, but I'm betting there will be. But we don't have a confirmation on that. Please be sure to like and subscribe this video. Be sure to hit that bell so you know when new videos are out. And please, as I said, comment down below because every comment helps engagement. Then that makes the algorithm say, oh, people like this video or commenting on this video. So go ahead and comment. Anyway, that's how we grow the channel and that's how we keep going. Again, thanks for watching. I've been Ball Matrix. And I'll catch you next time. Hello everybody, I'm Vault Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Cyclonus the Warrior from Transformers Studio Series 86 Collection. Oh wait, no, he's from Kingdom. Wait, why is he in Kingdom and Scourge is in the 86 Collection? Why Hasbro, why? Anywho, this figure is absolutely fantastic. This is the most fun I've had with a figure of this Voyager size class that honestly that I can remember. This is everything that I've ever wanted out of a Cyclonus figure. And I, I mean that. I genuinely mean that. This thing is absolutely amazing. If you have any love of that Generation 1 design, this is the ultimate Cyclonus figure. To hell with fans toys. I mean, seriously, to hell with any of the third parties. For a hundred bucks, you could or more you get one of those, or you could spend 30 bucks and get this. I would rather spend $30 and get this and be able to transform it in like two minutes. The only accessory the figure comes with is this big old gun that the original generation one figure came with, or at least it's stylized after that original generation one figure. Is the gun that he comes with not doing it for you? Well then go ahead and grab some battle masters and just plug them in, give him one or two or 13. Actually, I could probably do more because he has two different ports on the bottom of each foot. See, one, two, and then one on the outside of the leg, one on the bottom of the forearm, the hands on top of the shoulder, on the back of the wings, and on the very back. Yeah, you can armor this guy up to a crazy level. Another really good thing about Cyclonus is the light piping on the figure. Man, that's really nice. I really appreciate the reddish orange glow they've got going on here. The designers also nailed the sculpting of the figure. He just looks grumpy and mean, and I really do appreciate that. They managed to get the crest on the horns perfect and painted very well. And just the overall aesthetic works so nicely for me. Only complaint. Well, I have two, and they're very minor. One. I think the paint is a little bit uneven in spots. It's not exactly the same kind of lavender or lilac throughout the entire figure, which I'm okay with. That, I'm okay with that. And the other thing that I find just annoying is this is just for plain bots are the hollowness of the wings. I just wish the wings weren't hollow. It would look so much better if they weren't. Ah, <sighs> man, it's just annoying. It's just a pet peeve. It doesn't hurt the figure in any way, it's just a pet peeve. One thing I'm very happy that they did is they included these little foldable wing tips because that then gives the kind of sawed off look that Cyclonus has always had on his wings. Just, it's that attention to detail that I absolutely love. Another attention to detail that I find really pleasing is the height difference between him, or Cyclonus, and Scourge, or Scourge if you will. This is accurate in the show. 
Scourge is a half head to a full head shorter than Cyclonus. Cyclonus has a wonderful range of articulation. Head can look down that much, can look up quite a bit, and move side to side. It's kind of on a double hinge, so he's got a ball joint just inside the neck, and then the actual neck has got a hinge joint there down by the collarbone. Shoulders can swivel all the way around and hinge inside and out. Swivel at the upper arm, bend at the elbow is a little over 90 degrees and can straighten out. And then the fists do articulate, though moving them by themselves is a little bit difficult because the, the swivel above the elbow is looser than the actual fist. The fist itself does swivel, though it is very tight. A torso swivel is present. Legs can kick forward and can kick back almost at pretty much 90 degrees and can kick out at 90 degrees. Swivel at the thigh, which is very, very tight. Well over 90 degree bend at the knee and the reason the knees do this is for the transformation. And the toes can kick forward quite a bit, can't kick back that much, and they do have a nice bend at about 30 degrees. The figure also has a peg hole in the crotch for a flight stand. For me, Cyclonus is the best figure in the Kingdom line so far. It's so much fun, and it's purple and Decepticon-y and exactly what I wanted from a Cyclonus. And it's everything that Scourge isn't. Scourge is fine. I mean, you're going to transform into a flying surfboard skateboard thing and he's as good as he's going to be. But man, Cyclonus is just a, like a quantum leap above Scourge. Cyclonus's transformation is so much fun. Let's start with the feet. Come on down to the feet, flip them forward, or you know, push them forward, and then come up behind the heels and flip out these panels, and then fold the toes up into the lower legs, and then flip out these little hidden bits and then fold them down. And oh, hey, look at that, jet thrusters. Nice. A thing that I've been noticing about the figure is that he does have a tendency to have his legs pop off at the hinges or swivels, they go right back on. Continuing with the transformation, combine the legs together and then quite literally just kind of push the legs down into the shins like this. Once we have the legs all the way down, we could come to the shoulders and unpeg them from the rest of the body like that. Then grab the entire backpack section and fold it down. Grab the entire chest section and flip it forward. Take the entire head, flip it 180 degrees down into the chest, come to the section we just flipped out, and this whole thing will open up. And then we got a Russian doll gimmick going on here, because then we fold out the next bit, and then open it up, and flip out the very tip of the nose cone. Ah, uh, really, you, you, you could do it. You just got to get your finger in there. My ham hands just don't want to do it. Once you have the nose cone flipped up, Close up the front of the nose cone, close up the back of the nose cone, close up the shoulders, fold down what was the back, and take the back with the shoulders and flip it all the way around like that. And then that whole back section will peg into the back of the canopy. And I realized I said the ch what, what I said for the chest, I called the chest the shoulders. That was incorrect, obviously. Fold the shoulders back down and they will kind of peg into place very loosely. Come to the back of the wings, fold them down, straighten out the arms and open up the top of the forearm while pushing down on the little wing there. Flip the fist around, close that up, fold them back and turn the arm fist so that the little top of the forearm can come in and peg into the rear of the vehicle mode, and then just shimmy the wing all the way out like that, and do the same on the other side. And just look at this space jet mode. It is a thing of beauty. Oh, I, I don't care if there's some mismatch in the coloring. Who cares? We wound up with what is by far the best Cyclonus jet mode ever put to plastic. I mean, look at this thing. Four thrusters in the back, not a bit of robot kibble in sight. I'm sure you can, you can 
might say that, oh, well, there's a little bit of robot cable right here, but who cares? You have working landing gears that fold up and easily out of place and are invisible, almost invisible, in robot mode. You've got universal color going for the most part. And the only, only detail that doesn't work is right there. This little bit sticks out just a bit too far. It doesn't taper cleanly. Oh well, so what? Everything else on this figure is just perfect. Even in this mode, you can arm him to the gills. You could put guns on the back of the fuselage or engines. You could put guns under the wings. You could put a gun on top, and then you can put thruster boosts coming out the back there. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful, and I utterly love it. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm very, very happy with our Cybertronian jet boy here. Or should, should I say a Unicronian Jet Boy? Anywho, who cares who made him or where he came from? This figure is wonderful. I absolutely love it, absolutely recommend it, and it needs to be in your collection, especially if you even have the hintest of G1 love or the love of G1 designs. Sure, Scourge is fine, and this is the best Scourge we've ever gotten, but this is by far the absolute best Cyclonus there has ever been. You can't top that. Well, maybe you can. With the best Grimlock there ever was. Who knows? Maybe I'll review that this week too. So folks, at the time of this video review being March 15th, we just got a reveal of Galvatron's feet. I'm expecting it to be a leader class figure. At least I think that's what the leaks also say as well. Also at the time of this recording, on April 9th, there is going to be a Hasbro reveal of the third wave of Kingdom. So my hope is that we get Galvatron revealed at that point. Once that happens, I'll be sure to make a video of it and let you know what I think of it. So folks, let me know what you think of Cyclonus down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix, and I'll catch you next time.